So today's topic is 3.3, completing the square. That's on pages 180 to 197 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is to once again demonstrate understanding of quadratic functions of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and of their graphs, including vertex, domain and range, direction of opening, axis of symmetry, and x and y intercepts. And our lesson objectives today is number one, to be able to change a quadratic function between standard form and vertex form by doing something called completing the square. And number two, to be able to write a quadratic function that models a real life situation. So one of the things we need to be able to do in this course is convert a function from standard form to vertex form, and that's so we can actually find the vertex of this quadratic function. And in order to do this, we need to understand what a trinomial square is and what its factors actually are. So a trinomial square is a trinomial that is the result of squaring a binomial. So the factors of a trinomial square is this binomial that was squared. So for example, if I were to square x plus 2, I would get x squared. And remember when we're squaring a binomial, instead of writing it out the long way, x plus 2 times x plus 2, and then you know multiplying using the FOIL principle, so x times x is x squared, x times 2 is 2x, and then 2 times x is another 2x, and then 2 times 2 is 4, there is a faster way to do it, and that is by squaring the first term, so our x squared, and then we square our last term, so that becomes a positive 9. And in between, we're going to multiply x by negative 3 twice. So that means if we do that, we get negative 3x, and if we do it twice, we get negative 6x. And these are all trinomial squares. So we need to be able to identify a trinomial square so we can actually go backwards and actually factor it. So x minus 5 squared is x squared and 25, but there is a middle term, and it's negative 5 times x, but then doubled, so that makes it negative 10x. And then finally, x plus 7 squared would be x squared. We get a 49 when we square the 7. 7 times x is 7x, and we double that, we get 14x. So this is just the fast way of squaring a binomial. So we need to be able to follow this pattern in order to complete the square. So now the question is, what uh, number do I put in here in order to make this a trinomial square? So the number that I put in here, we know that this number is actually the two terms multiplied together and doubled. So if I take half of it, I get 3, which would be the second part of this binomial. And if I square that, then I get 9. And that would be my x plus 3 squared. That would be my binomial. So this is now a trinomial square. And this is the factored version of that trinomial square. So x squared minus 8x, if I take half of negative 8, I get negative 4. If I square that, I get 16. And then I have x minus 4 squared here. Doing the same thing, I take half of, of 20. If I take half of 20, I get 10. If I square it, I get 100. And this would have been x plus, one, uh, x plus 10 squared then. We can always double check. Square the x, I get x squared. Square the 10, I get 100. Multiply them together, 10 times x, and do that twice. So 10x and 10x is 20x. So x squared minus 22x, I take half of negative 22, that's negative 11. I square it, that's 121 x squared plus 24x, I take half of 24, that's 12, I square it, I get 144. Notice as well that these are always going to be positive because you're always squaring what you get. And then x squared plus 7x, well, you can take half of 7, it just ends up being 7 over 2. And when I square 7 over 2, I get 49 over 4. So this is a trinomial square. And so the two factors here would be x plus 7 over 2 and x plus 7 over 2. So we're not going to use this skill, along with our knowledge of balancing equations, to change a quadratic in standard form into one that is actually going to be in vertex form. So here's our first example. It says f of x is equal to x squared plus 8x minus 7. Now right now, this is not a trinomial square, but we can kind of make it a trinomial square. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move this negative 7 over here. And if in your notes you want to make a step-by-step -step process, that would probably be a pretty good idea. So we're going to move the negative 7 over. We're going to leave a blank here. So now I'm going to say, well, what do I have to add on to this thing so I can make this a trinomial square? So if I take half of 8, I get 4. And if I square it, I get 16. Now, here's the part of balancing an equation. If I've added 16 to this equation, I've changed it. So it's no longer equal to f of x if I just add 16. So what I'm going to do to balance it out I'm going to subtract 16 at the same time. 
So adding 16 and subtracting 16 is like adding zero. But the benefit of doing it this way is that I now get x squared plus 8x plus 16. That's x plus 4 squared minus negative 7 minus 16. And that's negative 23. So right now I have a quadratic that is now in vertex forms, no longer in standard form. I've changed it to vertex form all by knowing how to complete the square. So my vertex in this case would about now be negative 4 comma negative 23. And this is an important skill to know when you get a quadratic in standard form, you need to change it. Second example, something a little bit different. I have a negative 3 in front of my x squared. So I can't quite um, do use the same process because in order to make a trinomial square, I can only have a, a 1 in front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out a negative 3. But what uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm only going to take out two terms. And that's okay. You can do that in math as long as you write it appropriately. So I took out a greatest common factor of negative 3 out of the first two terms. Oops, that means that this would have to be a positive 6. So now I have something that I can um, complete the square with. So when I'm doing that, I'm going to take half of 6. And you'll see me write this sometimes. So half of 6 is 3. And if I square that thing, I am going to get a 9. So what I've got there now is g of x equals negative 3. And this is just x plus 3 squared. Now the next thing that's really important to understand is that I need to balance this thing out. I haven't done so yet. So in this example on the left hand side, I added 16, subtracted 16. But now this 9 is actually being multiplied by whatever is outside the brackets. So in order to balance it out, I have to do the opposite of what's actually being added. So it looks like I'm adding 9, but I'm actually adding 9 times negative 3. So I'm actually adding negative 27. So in order to balance it out, I'm going to have to add 27. So I get a 0. So that's the only thing that changes. So you have to be careful. When you take out this greatest common factor, you um, need to add and subtract the, the same thing. Uh, in this case, since the greatest common factor was negative, it was a negative 27. So I have to add 27 to balance it out. And that means I get negative 24 plus 27 over here, which is just the same thing as a positive 3. So the more that you use this process, the more that you're going to be able to uh, quickly change a quadratic from standard form to vertex form. And in this case, now my vertex is at negative 3, comma 3. So here's another example. It says write the following in vertex form. Um, so we're going to try the same process again. Again, we're going to take out that negative 3. So I get x squared plus 9x, and then I still have this 13 over here. Now, the, the reason I'm doing this as an example is that when I take half of 9, I get 9 over 2. And when I square that thing, I get 81 over 4. And I'm not only adding 81 over 4, I'm actually adding 81 over 4 times negative 3. So what I've ended up doing is I'm adding, um, what would that be? That would be negative 243 over 4. So that means, oh, and it's a negative, so I'm actually subtracting 243 over 4. So that means I have to add 243 over 4 over here. So what I end up getting is negative 3, x plus 9 over 2. That's just 4.5 for you people that don't like fractions. And then I have to add these things together. So um, 13 times 4 is 52. So I get 52 over 4 plus 243 over 4. So I get negative 3 x plus 9 over 2 squared plus that would be 295 over 4. So here's our final example. It says a sporting goods store sells reusable sports water bottles for $8. At this price, their weekly sales are approximately 100 items. Research says that for every $2 increase in price, the manager can expect the store to sell, store, sorry, to sell five fewer water bottles. So we need to write a quadratic function that represents the revenue for this situation. So if we're going to call it a revenue formula, I'm going to call it R of X. So revenue is going to be equal to your number of bottles multiplied by the price. And that's an important thing to be able to do is to write this out kind of in English first. So then we can dictate what sort of has to go in here for for the, um, the variable. So our number of bottles, we know that it starts off with 100 bottles. But every time that he raises the increase or raises the price, he loses five fewer water bottles. So if I said that would be minus five X, that means that X is going to be my number of price increases. So the price then is $8 to start off with. 
And every time that he raises the price, it's going to be an increment of $2. So that's going to be plus 2x. So the x because that's the number of price increases and the 2 because after one price increase, that should be $10 for that water bottle. And now I can get myself a quadratic formula um, by expanding this thing. So I have 100 times 8, which is 800. I have 100 times 2x, which is 200x. I have negative 5x times 8, which is negative 40x, and negative 5x times positive 2x, which is negative 10x squared. I can write that in standard form by just adding like terms and putting the x squareds first and writing it in descending order. So 200 minus 40 is 160x, and then I still have 800. So here is my, uh, my quadratic function that represents the revenue for this situation. So now I need to determine the maximum revenue and the selling price that will give him that maximum revenue. So remember, if we're talking about a quadratic, this quadratic has a negative A term, which means it's going to open downwards. So a quick sketch tells me this quadratic looks something like this. And that at some point, X being your number of price increases and R of X being your revenue, you can continue to increase the price and you will eventually find a maximum revenue. But after you continue to increase the price after that, you'll sell less and less water bottles so you won't actually make an, um, a maximum revenue anymore. You'll be working towards a minimum revenue. So there is a, a point in here, which is the vertex, which will tell us exactly what the number of price increases should be and then what your revenue would be if we could find the vertex, which is why we learned how to complete the square. So I'm going to take out a negative 10 from the first and the second term, and that leaves me with x squared minus 16x. And now I take half of this term, which is negative 8, and I square it, and that makes it 64. So when I'm done, I get negative 10 x minus 8 squared plus 800. Now remember, we have to balance this thing out. So I didn't just add 64, I added 64 times negative 10. So I actually subtracted 640. So to balance it out, I have to add 640. So my final equation is negative 10 x minus 8 squared plus 1440. So we've now found the location of this vertex. It's at 8 comma 1440. Now knowing what these variables are helps us determine the answer to this question. This is the revenue going up at our vertical axis. So that means our revenue is 1440. And the selling price, well, X was the number of price increases. So that means there were eight price increases. Well, each of those price increases was for $2. And we started off with an $8 water bottle. So eight times two plus eight is 16 plus eight. And that makes it $24. So the water bottle is gonna cost you $24. And you're gonna be, sell, gonna be able to sell enough of them to raise $1,440. So in summary, we can change a quadratic function from standard form to vertex form by a process called completing the square, and that's a process you need to become very familiar with. And we need to remember that we have to balance the equation. That's a big deal, especially when we have a number out in front of the brackets. And this pro process changes when we have an A value of something other than 1. You also need to be able to create quadratic functions for various types of real life situations. My suggestion is if you can write it out in words, that'll help you um, start building it with uh, algebra and with variables and numbers. And the vertex of this function will have either a maximum or minimum of the function, depending on the direction of opening. So the one that we just did was a maximum function. Um, you might have a minimum function. Maybe you're trying to minimize cost, but here you're trying to maximize revenue. So it depends on the situation and the equation that you build. So your assignment is on pages 192 to 197 in your text. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.